Hey everybody, welcome back to season nine of the Micro Vlogcast. I'm here with Mike and Vicky. We're talking about our unbiased expertise principle and how having um, a lack of need to sell a particular thing can actually unlock value and new ideas and uh, our clients achieving greater impact and meeting their goals uh, in a better way. Uh, and so, uh, we talked in previous episodes about sort of the procurement unbiased expertise value um, and just buying energy. But like, let's hear a little bit about how this shows up as it relates to like technologies in a facility. Yeah. So we had a, a good example would be a publicly traded food and beverage manufacturer that came to us and said, we need to decarbonize our operations, very heavy thermal loads because they're manufacturing um, beverages. And so uh, they basically said, can you help build a decarbonization plan? And other companies also submitted bids to this. And I think the big differentiator we won it and, and implemented it is we were coming out. I think a lot of firms would come at that and say, like, we can do an energy audit and help you be more efficient with the technology that you have. You also might find like emerging technology vendors coming out and saying, like, we can help you decarbonize with this emerging whatever technology, whether it's hydrogen or electrification or whatever. And we basically said, if you need to decarbonize, we need to put all the cards on the table. Mm -hmm. We need to assess what's feasible today, what's feasible in a few years, and what may, may be feasible out into the future, and then plan accordingly. Mm -hmm. So we went on site at these major facilities, again, massive thermal load, and basically said, like, today, if you wanted, you could do energy efficiency, increase pipe insulation, improve efficiency of your heating systems, et cetera. But then we also looked at all kinds of emerging technologies. Vicky may have some more details on things like, can we use solar thermal technologies? Where is that at in the development um, and feasibility for being in the marketplace? Is that something that's not even um, tested in reality yet? Or is it something that's installed? And so we looked at the whole concept and helped them build out a whole roadmap. Again, not just focused on one piece of their journey. And how, how was the plant laid out? What yes. land is available? Yes. What other research can we do to bring other out-of-the-box solutions? So um, one of the items that we looked at was heat and energy for that with thermal storage, Sorry. which whoever can unlock storage long-term is going to be the winner of the next billion-dollar race. Yes. Um, but this new technology actually uses hot water with some patents that are in terms of the, the distribution of the hot water and allows for up to 24 hour storage. Um, so again, brand new, um, it's at a university today, but just being able to work outside the box and look at new cutting edge technologies that would meet potential goals for this customer was super exciting. And, and when, I think of, when I think about uh, our customers and who we work with at our customers and the different stakeholders we work with, I think what's interesting about this is like sort of known technology that's, I'll call it more of a commodity that you can get at a distributor. Those are typically like maintenance or facility people that are making those decisions and they have budgets and, they, and they're and they like, they might need some outside assistance deciding priorities, but like that's a known thing and that's a group of people making those decisions. Some of this future oriented, like not ready for market kind of technology that's in service of a potential 2040 goal. You've, you've got global EHS, head of engineering, head of engineering, uh, CFO, legal counsel, yeah. kinds of people that are actually paying attention to that because they're doing long range planning and they're trying to get out in front of this stuff. And so, being able to speak to all those different stakeholders in one cohesive way and say, here's how your different people at your organization participate in these different stages and thought processes related to the here and now and the long term, I think is one of the things it's, it's challenging for a lot of our clients to sort of like unpack that, right? Like maintenance managers and head of legal counsel, corporate affairs are not often in the same conversation. But in this particular lens, they they actually need to be. And that's a, another part of, I think, the approach that we're trying to bring to people tied to the transparent actual principle, which is like, how do we educate people in a way that everyone sort of understands what they're getting into and we can get the most buy-in. So anyways, another layer to this that I think is interesting um, beyond just like looking at different tech. So uh, great. Well, thanks everybody for joining and we'll see you next time.
How do you think I'm doing on my 11 o'clock meeting? You think I'm on time? 